Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of podcast with Oleksiy Natenkov. When we have successful business owners here, multimillionaires, multibillionaires, interview celebrities. So here we provide value for you. You can take it advice in the business, real deals, real stories, real lives. And today I wanted to present you special guest. So we have a special guest today, uh, Nick D'Angelo. Nick D'Angelo, welcome. Alexi, thank you for having me. I really, uh, it's been great catching up with you beforehand here, having a good conversation just a minute ago, and I'm excited to talk with you today. Thank you. Let's go directly with questions. Uh, <laughs> if you want, don't mind, and uh, we start. Sure. Yeah, so a little bit about me, like you said, my name is Nick D'Angelo. Our company is Saint Investment Group here, and we have been... Shoot, I, this is my 20th, yeah, and look at that beautiful website you got in your background. I The first thing I saw as soon as I as we were talking, I saw that website pulled up. I love it. But uh, at Saint, we focus on fixed income investing. 25% of the seven successful exits, uh, 13.4 million distrib distributed to investors, amazing. And how you can see it, it's uh, more than 206 million plus assets under management. So it's unbelievable. We've, we've, and you know, on our side, it's, uh, it's many years of, of working towards this and, and building the team. We have an incredible team. I'm celebrating 20 years in real estate myself. Uh, we built the team over that time. So where we're at today is we get to provide a lot of free content to amazing investors. And our investors are typically very successful people, entrepreneurs, real estate investors, a lot of property owners. Um, you know, we put out all free content on economics, on uh, investment strategies throughout the market, which is what most people typically find us from is putting that out uh, from our, a lot of our free content and speaking events. So it's great to be with you. And uh, yeah, we can build out on anything. I'm excited for our conversation. What is your superpower? resourcefulness because of the fact that um yeah i and i tell my team this all the time i say i don't i don't promise to be the smartest i don't promise to be the best but i do promise that we will find solutions better than anyone else that's my guarantee so with our team we have we have an amazing strong team my side my absolute superpower as C at St. Investment Group, I'm not better than most of my team members at any one thing, but it's providing them with support and providing an A plus level 10 team where we're always finding the best talent. We're always finding the best people to add. So it's me being as resourceful as possible and making positive that our team is resourceful as possible. And then as far as tonight goes, it's wasting time. If someone wastes my time or if someone's wasting time on their side, something that is uh, the most difficult thing for me to deal with. And um, it's just because our time is so short on this earth and we're trying to work hard and we have a very fast paced team, a very fast paced, uh, it's a very fast paced market. So we got to move quickly. So that's the hardest thing for me to deal with is anytime there's anytime there's um, things that are not efficient or doing things that are not the highest value. Those are always the things I'm focusing on highest value, the quickest and being as resourceful as possible for myself and our team. Okay. If you have to look to, to back, what one way people like to do business with you? Whew, that's a great question. The number, I mean, if you look backwards, you look in the rear view mirror for your partners, the best partners, the best everything. If you want long-term partners, make them a lot of money and don't be greedy. Right. So we have people we've been working with for 10, 15 years with very big dollar figures. And the reason we're still working with them today is we make them a lot of money and we're very, very clear and upfront and open with them about what's going on. So they don't feel the need to be more involved with their money, with other people or with their wealth advisor, et cetera. They work with Saint because we're telling them exactly what's going on. We're telling them what decisions we're making and we're providing a big piece of the pie for them. So, you know, our goal is never to be greedy and our goal is always to be upfront about what can be expected. And we continually meet expectations 
Because, you know, at the end of the day, investors, they work hard, right? They're not full-time investors. Most often when you're raising money from people, they're they're not full-time investors. They have their own lives. They have their own family. They have loved their children. They run their businesses or run, you know, run what they need to do in their personal life. So if they are respectful enough to give you the opportunity to manage their money or invest their money into some real estate, for instance, then they want to know that what you say, your word, you're always going to stick to it. You're always going to communicate. So for us, it's communication. It's, no, it's telling our people why we do things. It's having best in class reporting. That was something very early on. We wanted the best, best, best reporting. Uh, I mean, shoot, we do live Q&A webinars just for okay. investors. Just so they can go and sit down and ask questions. So it's not only what's in the reports, which are great, but they get FaceTime with us. Because when you have a huge amount of investors, they want to know who you are and have a personal touch. So if you can provide white glove treatment, if you can show and demonstrate that you're not going to be greedy with their money and that they'll still make a great return and a great outsized return, then uh, that's been our key for long-term relationship building and, uh, and you know, checking in, making sure they feel the relationship with you too. What is most the biggest value in your in your business is what it was and how you uh, learn from it as well the number one thing that i can that i can share that's been um the most successful for me in my life in every area i consider my life to have three phases one is health one is wealth and one is legacy so health is all types of health, mental health, spiritual health, physical health, right? Uh, yeah. Wealth is passive income, net income, and uh, your net worth. You got to make sure that your net worth is ongoing and it's growing. And then legacy to me is making the world a better place. It's my children. It's making sure that the time, the very small amount of we have on this earth, that I have on this earth, that I'm making the world a better place and leaving it better than I found it. So the the number one thing to maximize those things in my life is focus. If there's only one thing. There's only one thing. It's focus. Because we don't have enough time to be unfocused. So every single day, I go to the gym to maximize my health. I spend time with my children, you know, at the end of the day to make sure I got my legacy, my personal health, my, my emotional health. And then uh, as far as the wealth side goes, I'm at Saint six days a week. I work very hard very focused at any given time at Saint, each team has set initiatives with only a small number of tasks that they do. But those tasks probably are going to take nine, you know, three months, 90 days, right? So we're extremely focused. My life, extremely focused. When I want to learn something, I'm only learning that for months at a time, right? So I just, I think uh, a lot of people go, they do too many things, and it's a sad story a lot of times because they go too many directions instead of being able to focus all of their amazing talent and brains and efforts and energy to one thing and go way further. So if there's one thing that I would tell people as the literally the key to everything that I've ever been successful at, it's being focused on exactly what matters and everything else is secondary. Nick, if you, if you had to do it all over again what do you do it differently and why um that's a great question i would say if i had to do it all over again i would do it the same i do it the same the only thing i would change because i've made all the mistakes we've done everything you know we've, we've done a lot of things wrong but the thing that we always did right was always looking for the best opportunities and look and thinking bigger. So I always was always always trying to think of the biggest opportunities that we could be for and the best team to put around that. If I could do it all over again, the only change, the only changes I would make in my life would be I would probably uh, I'd probably be with my lady sooner. Her and I would have found each other earlier. That would have made life a lot better. And the second is I would have went way bigger on way bigger deals on a way bigger fund earlier. So it's just doing things bigger earlier because you can figure it out if you're going for that and you have the experience. I started real estate very young. I'm blessed that I was around people that were dear mentors, family and friends that I saw were very successful. I was 15. 
I, I'm 36 now. I'm 36 15. now. I was 15 when I started in real estate. And uh, I, was, I started marketing for people that were way beyond my skill set. They were way beyond uh, what I could have been. But I basically marketed almost for free. So it was like free talent, a young kid who could uh, update your marketing. And I just offered most of it for almost for free. And then years later, they became partners and then investors. And, you know, I made a lot of money with those with those uh, friends and family years later. So I had great mentors. I was very you know, fortunate to be able to work with great people early on. With 15 years, how, how you, 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 you know it, then you are um, uh, most to be in real estate. You have some uh, experience with real estate or you, you see someone? Um, I was a construction worker at 15, so I built walls. And so I, I, I picked heavy blocks up and then I put them on a wall and then I walked over and I picked more blocks up and I put them on walls. So I was a mason at the age of 15, and that's a very, very difficult job. That's a very hard job. It's 11 hours a day of just picking up heavy stuff. So I was in my head all day thinking about how I could not do that job anymore and what to do better things and who was doing better than me and how they were doing it and just thinking about this all day long. So what I did was look around at people that were very successful, that you know were very smart, and what they were doing with their money. And consistently almost across the board, the most successful people that had the highest streams of increasing passive income and increasing net worth were real estate investors. So at 15, I knew that these were the people I wanted to be around. And I knew that I knew some you know, marketing and some internet things that maybe they... So I reached out to some friends and family that were real estate investors. They were owners of properties. And I just said, I'll do your leasing for you for free. I'll just do your marketing for you for very, very little. And just if I if I get leads for you for free, pretty much, if I get leads for your leasing, then pay me later, whatever you think is fair. And if I don't, then lose anything, right? And so eventually I started getting I started getting a lot better. I was posting on places early Craigslist. This is how old it was. It was a very long time ago. Early Chris, early LoopNet, early Smith Guide. Some of these companies aren't even around or being used anymore. And um what I found was that I was able to write good ad copy. I was able to post and, and support ads in different ways to get pretty good at it to where they started seeing a lot of leads. Most of their leasing leads were coming from me after I was doing it for several years. So I learned a lot. I charged them nothing and it was a free offer for them for their business with really no risk. So uh, that's how I got into real estate was basically bartering my way in doing free. And uh, I was just blessed to be around these people. That's how smart they were. And that's all I wanted to achieve was to be close to them, eventually create money with them. And we did a lot of deals. But early on, it was all me giving just to try, just to try and be in close proximity to these that had great lives by real estate investing. What is uh, your definition of success for you? It would be, you know, it goes back to the, my definition of success goes back to wealth and legacy. So for health, it's that I want a long life and the life I live on the planet is going to be filled with relationships and physical where I'm not, you know, hurting my body with, you know, too much drinking or many other substances. Um, so it's being very clean and working out regularly for wealth. I have ridiculous goals, right? Like I want to be able to have a lot of money and a lot of income to do the things on the legacy side. I want to help my children. I want to be able to invest in the in the government in ways that I want to support so the government's doing the best stuff in the United States. I want to be able to support my church. I want to be able to support the causes that are important to me, right? For me, education for entrepreneurs is huge. Research for cancer, those are the two things that are most... So if I can support those by making a lot of money and putting money behind causes that are important, those are the most important things. That's what I would consider a really successful life. If you met yourself... With 20 years old, what advice you can give him or be successful in what he needs to do in focus? I was a tough kid at 20 years old. So I, I don't know if I would have listened to myself, maybe I had a chip on my shoulder. But if I met myself at 20, what I would tell myself, I might, might you know, shake him really hard just to get his attention. But what I tell him is um, probably to stay the course and to learn and to learn business growth. That's the number one thing. Learn how to literally grow 
business at exponential growth levels. If you could do that and you can learn how to do that, there's a lot of upside opportunity for yourself and for your people and team that you about that can you could provide big opportunities for. So it is it is a skill set to grow a business. It is a skill set to grow a business. It's a skill set to grow a real estate portfolio. Most people don't know that skill set. It takes many years to do that, but there are a lot of good books and resources out there for people that can do that over time. So or then they can learn that over time. So I would tell myself to focus on business growth on the as far as it relates to business and success in the uh, wealth arena. Okay, and then the, in the end, uh, how how important legacy for you, and how you want it reminded as well. There's a few, yeah. That's so. There's a few aspects to legacy that stick out to me. There's legacy with just human general. My goal, honestly, is to share every free information wise, what we learn and what we build and what we find and, and what we uh, find successful at Saint, we give it free, truthfully. And it benefits us. The more people that make more money, then we'll trust Saint to invest, right? So we give away any business advice or any success or any, um, any advice that we found the way to be really, really high value. We just give it away. But part of is that it feels good and it's and it's very fulfilling to know you know you bring humanity up by bringing the best things and the best ideas into the world and, and making sure that those ideas can be discussed and given back to people um as far as on the personal I'm huge on my family i have a very big family i have uh, i don't know what 40 50 cousins alexi so big italian family my children are incredibly important want to give them all the education and all the opportunity without spoiling them. They got to work for it, right? So um, that's really it, is if I can give away, you know, uh, thinking about legacy, if I can give away the information in my head for free for as many people as that could benefit. If I can give my kids a firsthand mentorship and anything that I've learned along the way, my dad has been an amazing friend and mentor to me over the years. So I want to do the same for my kids. And then, um, you know, as far as making the world a better place, it's that you, what you earn and what you are able to bring to the world money-wise go places that make it the best. So if I can move two things forward, one is the entrepreneurial education of people, right? Our country, uh, you know, the U.S., an opportunity with a great, great, great background of entrepreneurial and strong, strong people that, uh, you know, started businesses, bootstrap businesses, and grew the the backbone of the United States to entrepreneurs. So if I can give more entrepreneurs more wind in their sails and more opportunity to better entrepreneurs with more education, ideally for free, then that makes me really, um, and I'll, I'll know that that's a positive thing. And the other is eliminating certain health things. For me, cancer is the worst. It's the worst possible health condition people can deal with. Make a small contribution to that. That'd be a really good legacy I could be proud of. What is most uh, valuable piece of uh, information you ever receive from your mentor? That's powerful. <laughs> I would I would say the two most important th that uh, mentors have ever told me is to be um, incredibly unmovingly focused and know exactly what's most valuable while having a freedom outcome. So absolutely clarity in. You know exactly what you want to achieve at all times. Clarity, so clear on what you want to achieve. Clarity of intent, freedom from outcome. So that knowing that the freedom from outcome is interesting. It's knowing that things are not going to go to plan. It's knowing that you are entitled to hard work, but you're not always entitled to the exact result that you want. But if you do work hard, the odds of all the great things happening increase. And that you can do is increase those, right? So I'd say clear intent, knowing exactly what you want to be doing, defining that really well, never taking your eye off exactly what you're going for. And then of uh, freedom of outcome, knowing that things are going to change and that you might in your heart change too along the way too. But all what you're going for and uh, being able to be agile and being able to change plans as needed 
um, along the way as well. The, that would, my mentors have shown me that in so many different ways. And um, I just see that more and more valuable and, and uh, as a lesson that I think more people need to incorporate into their lives. Amazing. Thank you for sharing. And uh, thank you for, for being and meet with me in this podcast. It's unbelievable. And uh, I hope so we need to do this part number two. <laughs> so you, Absolutely. You, uh, and the last one, uh, can you uh, explain a little bit for the new investors how they can benefit for them also, this information and uh, this investment? Absolutely. This is the best thing that I can offer. Amazing audience. I know you have a big audience and a lot of great people Two, that I can add them value immediately. The first is we give all of our free and we give all of our information away for free. In-depth economic analysis. We give in-depth business research, we give in-depth uh, investment strategies all the way for free at saintinvestment.com slash resources. So at saintinvestment.com slash resources, we repost all of our webinars. We post a lot of uh, great material of us walking through in depth, step by step, tools that we use, how we invest, what assets we break down, the business and learn that we're going through at that period of time. So all that's for free at saintinvestment.com slash resources. The second way that I can help your audience, we have a fixed income fund. Our fund pays between to 14.28% returns. We uh, send checks on a monthly basis. So people can buy on this income to live their lives and invest and work hard in their companies and, and in their roles and in their jobs while making an extra stream of income. So if people want to learn more about that income fund that pays between 12 and 14.2% return, which is very high returns right now, they can find that information at saintinvestment.com. And you invest uh, in all US or you invest in uh, other countries also? We're looking at other countries in the future, but right now we're 100% focused on the United States today. We were amazing. born investors though. So amazing. So now, ladies and gentlemen, you know, so you have this uh, big company here. So Nick uh, D'Angelo, thank you for meet. Thank you for being here. And uh, yeah, I wish you more customers for your in investments and uh, so i hope so you subscribe share and uh, reach uh, nick and d'angelo in social media so thank you lexi i had a great time thank you so much for having me on happy to meet with you anytime and i look forward to uh, keeping in touch